Okay, uh, welcome to uh, State of Play. Um, there's only one agenda on the agenda, which is the president's love letter to Ghanaians. It was a love letter, you know, that ended with a few things that, I mean, I, I, I remember where I, where I was when I was watching it. I was wondering, I, when the president started, I was full of expectation that finally, you know, we're going to hear some groundbreaking interventions. Um, yeah, the interventions were groundbreaking. Discuss. Groundbreaking? Yes. One, I actually think that, generally, I feel, yes, some of the indications that were given in this speech were indications of where we want to go. But those indications were given in 2016 too. Let's be clear on those ones. The indication of changing the gadgets by the economy, and that means making an economy or having an economy that's not import dependent. Mm -hmm. And that actually has its fundamentals being changed. That is the fundamental thinking we had in 2016. So six years down the line, if you come and rehash those same things and tell us, it means that the key question is, what have we done over the period? So to change the economy, we agreed we're going to do more. It's yeah. not some imposition that received two million or so from government. Yeah. We agreed we're going to do more promotion of local products, which will be exported. We also decided that we're going to fund a lot of the export process and use one B import, how do you call it, ISI, right? Import substitution, substitution industrialization. Mm -hmm. We decided with Matchbox today, this one, some small company somewhere is opening up. We paint it nicely. Then it says it's actually employing 15, 20 people. Why didn't we, in the last six years, put all of our energy, the things the president listed, the poultry, the rice, the major imports we bring into the country, why didn't we focus all our energy in that direction and remove our top 10 imports in six years? By now, Evans, we might not have done all the 10. We have done five, yeah. which would have been massive. Save us a lot of the money that we are talking about. So all talk, very little action, purported action, more slogans, but... We waited till six years to have the epiphany to do what is right once again. But that's not the other point. And I agree. And to me, I agree. But, that before, but before you even continue. Importation part, yes. So this is the NPP's 2016 manifesto. Mm -hmm. Page 13. NPP's economic policy objectives. Yeah. On the economy, our goal is simple, to build the most business-friendly and people-friendly economy in Africa, which will create jobs and prosperity for all Ghanaians. We will ensure that growth is socially responsible, diversified, spread geographically, comes from genuine, environmentally sensitive, and fair to all participants in the economy, including labor. Mm -hmm. To accomplish this, we will focus on growing the Ghanaian economy and creating wealth and prosperity for all. We will reduce the cost of business, maintain fiscal discipline, reduce government borrowing, mm -hmm. and reduce interest rates to spare the private sector investment. Our economic program will enhance agricultural production and productivity along with transformation of the economy through value addition to our raw materials in a process of rapid industrialization. So this is 2016. Bottom line, what yeah. you just read is a reproduction yes. of what the president told us on Sunday evening. And for me... But, but this is in 2016. Yeah, that's my point. Yeah. So he, the, he reproduced, that on Sunday, he yeah. reproduced, in essence, part of the budget. Yeah. Right? Uh, part, part, of their, part of their manifesto. Manifesto, manifesto in 2016. 2016 manifesto. Yes. Not even the... 20, <laughs> 2016 <laughs> manifesto. Six years ago. Yeah, six years manifesto. ago. So, but, but you see, but that tells you a big, a, big, a big picture. The big picture is, when you are in opposition, you are flowing with great ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a reason why he didn't go to 2020. He go to 2016, and he's reproducing them. When you're in a position, you have this flood of great ideas. Look, listen to JM mm -hmm. a few days ago, a, few, a week or two ago. Some brilliant ideas there, brilliant ideas. And I thought they, they, um, some of the things he said are really something that we should be considering, of course, by their own concern, because it's coming from JM. But that's the thing with opposition. You come into government, you face the reality, and then the government then begins to see its true size. Okay. But again, I look at the president's speech and something that really disappointed me. Some of the promises, some of the things he said they are doing now to fix the crisis are not only old. They are things that they put timelines to that they have failed. They have yeah. failed promises. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
some yeah. of the things are failed promises that he's bringing back. I mean, how bad can it get? Yeah. When you are delivering a crisis speech, mm-hmm. this is wasting Chechul. Yeah. Just before the blitz. Brilliant. Th- th- that is the comparison we're talking about. Two. That's the comparison we're talking about. This is, this is where we are. When, have you ever heard an African president admit we are in crisis? I will not kid you. Yeah. That's what he said. This is our Winston Churchill moment before the blitz. And the president chooses to rehash not only old promises, the promises that you have failed to deliver. It's amazing. One of them, I put to Kujo Pangoma, he was, you know, he, he didn't think that. But it was an issue because for me, it signaled how generally empty the speech was. Was the property tax thing. Yeah. That was in the 2022 budget. Where? Which it's was supposed in to have been taken effect in January. in January of this year. Yes. We are in o- October November. ending. November. Well, I mean, that's when he passed at the time yes. he was delivering this thing. October, ending. October ending. And you are still telling us you are going to do it. In that, you have failed to implement 10, 10 months I want back. I stay on the property tax thing. In 2015, this wonderful finance minister, untouchable finance minister of the Republic of Ghana, told everybody in this country that he lives around countermen or so. The people that live around him, they pay virtually nothing when it comes to property taxes. They are willing to pay way more than that. Yeah. And that when he gets into power, he will target it and make sure that it's properly done. The guy is finance minister for six years. Zilch. Let me, and, I, and, and, let, and, and, and we rephrase let, it. Let me just add to that. Yes. Because I learned also from um, the, I think Secretary told me this, I mean, the conversation. That they are their IMF program. Yeah, it was part of the con- part of the things that we had said that we would do, and the IMF bought into it. In other words, after the time we came in and continued and extended, yes, it was part of the thing. That's why they included it. Brilliant. The MP M- M- the MPP as in Ken right. included it, See. and you are still not done it. Six years old. See. One, two, three, Evans. four, five, six. Evans. If you gave birth to a child, the child started school. He's in primary one. Yeah, Evans. Six years after making these promises. We are told we are going to implement them again. I mean, <laughs> what sort of a, I mean, what, what sort of attitude is this? Amazing. That after six years, you're telling us you want to re, uh, restore macroeconomic stability. Yeah. You want to ensure import substitution. Ah. You want to bring back. I mean, you're going to engage traders to ensure that they do not, um, you know, increase. Uh, they do not engage in profiteering. One of the major problems facing us now is the fact that today, today, you have drivers, I mean, commercial uh, vehicle owners and drivers, yeah. beginning to tell you that we are no longer going to increase our first monthly, yeah. or I mean quarterly. Oh, At first, it was now, only two times. So now we're At first, now, it was only now, two times. Now we're going to do it every time fuel prices go up. Yeah. So I mean, adjustment. so what is going to happen to us is that our inflation yeah. will now just be going up any time. Yeah. And what did we do in other countries? What governments do is that they step in at this point and say, you know what, we want to ensure that there's at least some stability. So we want to engage. But the people. money they've squandered, the money to Yeah, but no, but you see, no, 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 no. So you actually see, let, no, hold, hold, listen. What you do is that you actually forego your taxes at this point because you're getting more at the port because of the, the, the position of the Ghana City. Yeah, they're also getting the yeah. windfall. The windfall wind from wind petroleum. From, yeah, That's yeah. what you do when you turn and they say the money is not there. You say you have reduced, you've cut it down by 30%. Mm-hmm. But you're telling me there's no money. So you cut down the expenditure and, 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 and discretionary expenditure. Oh, that's about 20, uh, 20 uh, I mean, billion. So that's even 7 billion. 7 billion. And you say that the taxes you get for petroleum is 4.2 billion. So you can't forego the 4.2 billion to cushion Ghanaians. That sends a signal to the, I mean, to the markets that we want to do something. So are we joking with people's lives like that? Transportation and the key ones means bringing down inflation, which means bringing down interest rates. Yeah. Which you should be interested in as government. Yeah. But Which means German, putting money directly more in Germany's the response exactly. was that train rides are going to be 9 euros across the board for a month. So if you buy the ki- tickets, they drove down transportation mm. costs. Mm. Our response initially was that, oh, we can weather the storm. Things will get better. Then we say we are cutting back. We say that coupons and all of those small, small things. Yeah. We say that government officials are cutting their salary, which is less than 1% of their Anyway, yeah. we're all of doing all of those things, and I'm saying if you really want to do that, government officials should not be cutting their they should be sacking them. 
let them come and stay home. Let them look for the jobs that everybody's looking for to let everybody be on the market. Yeah. If you cut down the numbers, it's not cutting the expenditure by 10%. That matters. Yeah. If you remove the guy and the expenditure fully, we yeah. no longer have to take care of the person. That's real impact on the, on, on the people. Now, we also know deep within our hearts that when government was advised right from the beginning, what can you do? Stop compiling debt. When in 2019, the IMF said that in the Joint Sustainability, uh, Death Sustainability Report, it said clearly that where you are going is dangerous. You are high risk of debt distress. We are still acting like, you know, when you are giving advice to a rich man, they don't take it because they think they're on the right path. That's, that's what we're doing. In fact, we're called naysayers. They said that people do not want our progress as a country yeah. because we don't know where we are heading. Yes, 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 we are not Yes, yeah. yes, yes, we are not ambitious enough. Mm. Your ambition now, this fifty-five percent we want to take back our debt to GDP was around 2016, 2015, 2016, 55 percent now. You think about it. So, in all fairness, we are rolling back to the period where you are coming six years in, six years out. And we're going to take six years to be able to do this. All the austerity that will come with it. So, at some point in time. If you knew you could do these things, why didn't you do them beginning? No, maybe so. But or maintain also, them. Also, or be responsible enough to maintain some of these things that I'm talking about. The, the extent of the failure. Where, so, in effect, the president was admitting that we really had the solution six, six years ago. Yeah. But we abandoned it. But we abandoned it. We let go. So we we let our guard down. Just amazing. I want to go through, could you have shared on, on his Twitter? Wow. The thing, the, the 12. Yeah, 12, 12. I'm going to go to one, one by the other. You guys tell me whether any of it sounds exciting. Restore market, I think we've dealt with that already. I'm asked for that. Is, is this a cliche now? We should just, you know, put it somewhere. Uh, tackle cost of living by working to stabilize price of petroleum products through new supply arrangement. Affordable supply. <laughs> From where? <laughs> you know, and, and for me, this is one of those ones. Phantom, you know, Hopeful, hopeful wish God, you see, the, you by know, the grace of things. God, kind of thing. Ah. If so, God is so, no, no, get to that. Know. So government is going to now bring the, uh, you know, crude oil into this country. Yeah, the fuel yeah, into the country. Yeah, that's, that's they're going to look for affordable. Government will go and look for affordable yeah. one and yes. direct the uh, BDCs to go and source yeah, it. Yeah, no, they will go and buy it and sell it to them and, and sell it to the BDCs. Yes. Yes. Okay. Maybe, maybe they will use oil. Oh yeah. no, they can no. Oh, maybe no, 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 if, oh, if they can. But, find but, it. But, but here's the thing: this is obviously not sustainable, right? Oh yeah. I mean, because this is a crisis. Primarily because of the depreciation the, of the CD. You know, you know why this doesn't excite me? Because I would have preferred it if, we, if the government, if the president told us that. We have secured. We have secured. We have secure. And you see, I was, I was, like, anybody who have lived through... And the it's also the part of the conversation. 2001. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody remember Kufo delivering a similar speech? Yes. yes. I remember Kufo delivering a similar speech. 2001, we in crisis. In that speech, he announced HIPIC. In that speech, he didn't say we are going to. He says we have secured an arrangement with... Nigeria. Yeah. Anybody remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. In my interview, could you, could you yeah, mention yeah. that? Some, but Kufo didn't say we are going to. No, but we are going to. Yes, it's future. future. Said, we have done. We have secured. Yesterday. Days after the supply had come in. Yes, the president said that he was part of the team that Ghana sent to go and engage Libya when we had a similar crisis and they secured it. When they came, they announced it to the country that, see, we've got some supply for Libya. That's what you do. Libya was very nice to us. They gave us some leeway to pay later on. And that's actually how we survived those threats. Yeah. That is what you don't do. come and now tell us that, that is what we are we hoping are to do. Yes. They will put people on a plane and, and I'm going to chase it. When you read the text, then they put in a caveat that says, we, it, this might fail or might succeed. It says, when successful, yeah. we would, you know. So, so if it fails, you don't come so complain. See, 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 this is your Marshall plan. Yeah, Out no, of no, massive crisis, no, guys, you know, your Marshall guys, plan is guys, maybe, 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 may not, guys, may work. I mean, even before you go through all of it, this is what I saw. I saw, I could see in the president's face one reluctance to have addressed the nation in the first place. Somebody yeah. forced him. Somebody it's, it's as if we, we compelled him, him, to, him to come and do, give the address. So what he sought to do was to tell you we are working. Yeah. We are trying to solve the problem. And I mean, that's the whole thing that I get. We are trying. The best brace in government went to spend days at yeah. Pedrasi Lodge, slept, woke up, thought, best brace, and produced this list. As a Marshall plan. Yes. You think about it. Go, go, go through it. You think about it. And you know the, the, Best the, the, my, the one that... We has policies as Marshall plan. I, I remember when I heard that part, I paused the television. I wonder, I wonder whether I should leave or stay. Which one? I'm, like, go to, I'm, go to, I'm going to do PMS. Go, go to the next one. Encourage traders to tone down profiteering. Yeah. Encourage them. Yes. It is a policy of to fix your crisis. A Marshall plan is to yeah. encourage. Like, like, you are in a we, crisis. We, we, we. 
We in the media. And one one of your big interventions is for you are going to encourage traders. We in the media can encourage. We've been doing that. We've been doing that. Are you the president? You can encourage them. You, the leadership of the country, put, put, put policies and programs on the table. Ask pastors to tell them in church encourage. that don't do it. Tell encourage. them what it is that you are doing for them so that they have to reduce their And you prices. see, somebody actually finished and tied this into bullets. Yeah. And when the person was typing, he didn't talk to the top person. 10. Top. He didn't talk to the person. Hey, Tali, how is this a crisis? Top 12. Fixing. Yeah. Yeah. But even for the president. So I've come to tell us this. Hey. I mean, and this is a recorded speech anyway. Yeah. So in recording it, and he said it. it all. He said it. And he was happy. Last that is going to encourage people. Last staff house has encourage like, people to tone down. The to tone down. So the to president stop. are like six directors of communication. Amazing. Some deputies and all of that put together. They all might have actually gone through this. No, I don't, I don't, that's for them. I don't no, no, I mean, no, I'm saying that the entirety of government yeah, yeah, yeah. went through oh, this yeah, process. Yeah, yeah. The, this is the cabinet. To yes. whole government. After days of yeah. meeting. And they went to the meeting. So I'm imagining the, the cabinet government ministers. This and then we say, so what do we do to fix the problem? And then everybody comes Put up their hand. One yes. Hand, oh, when somebody bring With them data back in there. Please, Mr. President, tomorrow, let's encourage the traders. You know, and the president, oh, yes, yes, this yes. This will yes. certainly include and the people who are engaged on IMF on our behalf. <laughs> And then the president said, oh, yes, yes, yes. Let's, let's put the cabinet and yes. then write it. And then you put it in a speech. And they'll debate it. I go back to my point. This is the Winston Churchill's moment. The Marshall Plan of Ghana. Charlie, and then you go to your people Charlie. and say, let's encap... Jesus. Okay, let's go on. Restore debt sustainability by reducing debt to GDP. Rate. This is another one. Look. <laughs> by 2028. What would the president be in 2028? No, 2028, <laughs> the next government after him would have been retiring. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you say... You say yeah. This is what we intend to do. Yeah. Now, six how do you years. how do you how do you achieve that? So, so, six years. So, so ask six years from now. How do you achieve that? Ask your question. The president has two more years of this six years under his watch, right? He should have told us, 2020, in my two like, unexpired years, I'm going to reduce this by X percentage. Yeah. Exactly. So that way we can hold you to it. Yeah. So overall, you want to bring it down to 55 percent in six years. But I have two more years to go. In my two years, I'm going to reduce it by 10% and leave the four years for somebody else to do. So I ask him that. And then he says, well, in the budget, you know, that's going to come and blah, 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 blah. Um, the, 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 they will break it down for you yeah. each year how they are going to. I'm sitting, I like Ojo Ponkroma, he's a good friend of mine. But I can bet my bottom dollar, the budget will be red. Eh? I won't see a breakdown of how the... the Six years, the 25, 55% translates into cuts every year, cumulatively to six years. You. Because when you do that, we can hold the president to it. So year 2023, 2023 to 2024, we need to see that percentage reduction, right? But then he says something else. He says this is part of some arrangement that they have with the IMF that has been agreed already. And they are putting in. In other words, when the IMF program is announced, we would see in the IMF program an agreement to reduce the debt by. The reason why I don't believe this, in the past, we've had similar targets. Yeah. You read it, right? You read yeah. the thing. When the president came, I remember him saying that he's going he's to make sure that under their tenure, we will not borrow debt to GDP beyond 65%. I remember this very well. That obviously... And 60 was unreasonable. Yeah. At some point, when we did the rebase and all of that and went to like 70, we we're all almost up in arms. And say that went to 50, uh, no, I mean, after the rebase, yes. it went to 56. No, no, went to, yes, 56. 56. Say, oh, yes, now we are coming to sustainable And levels. then you've increased it to uh, 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 80. After rebasing. Yeah. You have gone to, no, uh, 80 is as of July. Mm. Now, all the projections are either we are in the 90s or the 100 something. 104. Now, think about it. And you ask yourself, all of this money is... All the 400 million as of look, July, look, what did you do with it? Look, 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 look. This country, this country, how much are we putting? Which projects do you see that correspond to the huge amounts of money that you're talking about? Another one that disappointed me. Continue with efforts to reduce central government expenditure through budget cuts of 30%. Now, this is something they've been implementing for at least six months. Yeah, right? if it worked. Yeah, and I asked him. So, so on all, 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 all the other interventions, anytime I ask him specifics, he says, well, the relevant ministry will come and give you. The relevant agency will come and give you. Okay, then, so then we got to this one. That, this one is the only one among That's the law happening. that has been happening. That you can actually that you say can. that so far, how yes. much has been so, right, so how much have you saved from this? Yes. In the, of course, this is the concern, yes. but it doesn't leave at all. So how much is it? It doesn't know. And then I'm like, no, but that, that is unacceptable. Yeah. Because how do you even know that yeah. it worked? 
Yeah. Yeah. To be able to assess see, it, you know see, the amount is see, wrong, see, and this is impact, so that I can continue. See, see, see. You say, I am going to cut, uh, you know, salaries of, of, of appointees yeah. by 30%. You have a Minister of Energy at the Ministry of Energy with three deputies. Yes. I say, I mean, <laughs> cut down the number of ministers at the Ministry of Energy. You have a Minister of Trade and Industry and three deputies. I say reduce it to one deputy. Reduce the, I mean, uh, uh, energy to one deputy. That is when you begin to tell us that you are cutting down on government expenditure. Cutting down expenditure is not keeping the people and saying that we have 30% salary cuts. Meanwhile, if you remove them from office, and look, that man has a V8 fueled by the state. Yeah. You, give him a, you give him fuel allowance. I get it, so they, they bought them that, new yeah. vehicles. Oh, oh, I that, mean, yeah, they have, they, 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 they have, they have chefs, is. they have this, they have that. Yeah. Persons that you're spending government resources on. That, he wouldn't do boom. No, but that's what he should be doing. Don't come and see. If I mean, the president, he, he, he should it. do it. No, but if you, if you mean it, it, you do it. If it's crisis time and you're doing crisis communication, it should be deep enough for people to believe you that you really mean the kind of cuts that you want here. But if Shall the 10% worked, no, but, we be but, here today? but you made a point. The only, the only time in the speech where you got the sense that there was a crisis is when he said it was a crisis. Yeah. Yeah, because apart, all of this is. Apart from. Laissez faire. Yeah, I mean, honestly. We do. We do. Of the of <laughs> apart dresses. from that, there's nothing else he yeah. said that showed that it was a crisis. There isn't anything you can put your finger on and says, because you were expecting, right? Yeah. That the minute he spoke, by mo Monday. Things are working out. Things are changing. Yes. People are being cleared out. Exactly. A lot of things. Exactly. Happen. We are being told month by month what we're going to get out of exactly. it. Exactly. In fact, exactly now you've been in this crisis for at least a year. Yeah. Right. The first time you're addressing us properly on it, you should come to the table what? with immediate next day realities that will begin to see. One of those Obama presentations in his uh, what they call it uh, house was that he put up a projector. When we put up this policy, in two years time, we expected to create this number of jobs. Within this, my period, my tenure, when it ends, we would have created this number of jobs. I'm not talking about my second time, I'm talking about my first time. Yeah. Then he moved on to tell us all of that. That kind of presentation gives hope to the people. They think that they have a leader who's actually bent on getting things done. All that we heard from the leader of this country was not either Ray has policies or an indication of a willingness to do something great. Yeah. But we have seen that before. You're not new. You have been in the office for six years. You're not campaigning now. There is something that should be extraordinary in your crisis communication that says everybody but, but standing you know, up but on their feet and saying, oh, one things thing. have changed. It confirms one thing. They are at their wit's end. They have run out of ideas. They are clutching at straws. And it's, it pains me because if you look at the people in there, people who previously came with some significant yeah. reputation, but it just shows... Some of our best men. Yes. <laughs> it just shows that this entire government has just run out of ideas. They are just at their wait. Now they are just waiting for the IMF program. Yeah. Right? That's, in essence, just, let, let that's just, basically it. Let, let just wait for the IMF program to come on. That's the only thing. And they don't have any other intervention. It, it, it makes you miss from a president who fall. Yeah. I mean, he had... But this is the same MPPO. I mean, listen, you can change some people. You can actually reshuffle them around. But it's the same political party that over the years has been believed to be the savior of the country. The leader is different. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. But it's the same MPP, strategically, it's the same party that had history yeah. that, that we believe that, oh no, if things get bad, the MPP will come and fix it. Yeah. For whichever period it's because, but you see, Because you see, when in that meeting, right, because I'm a leader sometimes, I'm, I'm producing a show, whatever, and my, and, my, and my team comes and tells me, this is what I want to do. I you stand there and say, no, this is not standard. Oh, yeah, I, I will not accept it. No, we deserve better. No, we deserve better. I, I, How do I communicate I mean, this? So when, the press, when he, they wrote the speech for him, and they agreed that these are the things we're going to do, and part of the, your, your solutions is that you should encourage people to do X, Y, Z. Or the, and you recorded this, and, and you said it with us. And, 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 and they told you that, oh, somebody came and made an idea. We are uh, going to travel Evans, to the world. And Evans, go Evans, 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 Raymond, Evans. I mean, the fundamental question Listen, Evans, Raymond. Ask, the fundamental point which you made earlier is that we've reached a stage where it seems nothing can save us unless we go, the IMF approves our program and begins to instill some confidence in the Ghanaian economy. We had a chance to get the markets to appreciate the situation we're in, and we had a chance to get the markets working again when the NPP MPs 
called for the sacking of the finance minister, Kenu Furiata. Yeah. At that point in time, what the president could have done, if the president had listened to them and not lobbied them, and if the MPs also had refused, if they had said, we're not going to listen, Mr. President, I think that our people have spoken and we need Kenu Furiata out. I am telling you, things would have been totally different. If that had happened, you wouldn't even have had people wanting to go on a demonstration asking for the president to resign yeah. because automatically things change. Can, can you imagine the president saying, starting from tomorrow morning, the finance minister will cease to be my finance minister. Everybody yes, would yes, welcome this minister decision. minister of state will cease to be my finance minister. Starting from tomorrow morning, I'm going to present to you, uh, the people, a, a ministerial list of 55 ministers. You don't, don't tell us who's gone, ministers, yeah. but, you know, 55 ministers yeah. tomorrow morning. Starting from tomorrow morning, the 55 ministers will cease to receive fuel. Yeah. Zero fuel. No electricity will pay for them again. No. They should feel the pinch like yes. any other person. They will only survive on their salary. Like, you know. Like we all do anyway. Like, look, like, like all, where, all, all of yeah. a sudden, everybody will jump to the street and bro, say, thank you, Akufa. Like, like, even, yeah. even the position will say, thank you, Akufa. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. And you see, some of us. Like the moon will change that's overnight. That's the expectation we had of Akufuado. That's the kind of the no nonsense. Yes, yes. Because this is a man. Yes, who, this is a yes. man whose handlers told us that he didn't take fuel, drove his own car yeah. when he was minister, stayed lived in his, his own house. house, lived in his house. So if you lived in when your house, seven lakhs, he didn't take, he didn't take any. any. You, you, if you lived in your own house, you didn't take government fuel, you used your own car. What prevented you from telling your, I mean, ministers that look, guys, we can't give you fuel. And, and you see, Abba. It, it is. Uh, in fact, Akufo is in the position. Is the e is easy the easiest intervention they can ever do compared to any other government because these people they won't be better. You've kept them for six years. These ministers, Evans. like you see, when you have somebody in the position for two years and you're sacking him, then yeah. you'll be better. Yeah, be, but you have the if I see that, and, and yeah, I tell you have that. the unprecedented record of keeping your largely your whole ministry. ministry see, let me just read this message. Let me just read this message because we need to be going. I think we'll be going shortly. So, um, Gordon Agbeko says, guys, I suggest you have. One of these programs that just discusses the stuff at the presidency. That's where most of the rots are conceived and hatched. Because they know accountability at the presidency is non-existent. And he continues, as guys can recall, as soon as the red herring started popping up in this government, they started redefining the benchmarks all governments were marked against. Below the line, above the line. Now they are redefining hair cuts. Mm -hmm. Well, citizen Achu, which men? Apu, lightweight men. Kwabra uh, Konedu, we live in a country where the current leadership uh, do not think about the next generation. How do you go for a loan and say you pay back in 20 years? Uh, where will the current leadership be, uh, he says. And <clears throat> um, um, since it's not true again, they are, well, very strong, useless, clueless. I've seen a lot of adjectives. But people are angry. Well, Saturday there's a demo, right? Is it? Yeah, there's Saturday. a demonstration. Um, that's the Kumi Preko reloaded. You know what was at the Kumi Preko number one? Oh, really? <laughs> I was at the Kumi Preko 1995? Yes, 1995. Yeah, I was at the Kumi Preko. You know why? No. Because I grew up in Adabraka. Uh -huh. So the um, independent, could you Thompson Road or Could you Thompson Road? Thompson yeah. Road. So when you come from the uh, Obra, or you walk through, and then there was a, there, there was a cinema there called, uh, uh, oh, is it Rex or Rex? Roxy, Roxy. Roxy Cinema. Roxy Cinema, yeah. Well, well, how do you know? Oh, it's yeah, this guy. He was <laughs> <in> the <eight. laughs> So there's a Roxy Cinema that yeah. we used to watch. Mm -hmm. And then after Roxy Cinema, there's a cluster of schools. So as kids in the neighborhood, you know, we've heard about Kumi Preko on the radio. So everybody rushed to go and, you know, that, you know, Akufuado, you know, Besi uh, Prat, you know. The Roku Brobe, Roku Roku Bakano, Bakano. You know, so, you know, it's a society, young boy. So we rushed to go and watch. And that time, ACDR, you know, were, you know, doing yeah. their thing. And you yeah. could, you could, I remember very clearly standing the front. Beside, you know, beside the road and the police, um, is it called an armored vehicle? This blue one they used to have with the gunship on the top would speed up and just run through the crowd and say, and say, and say we'll go to um, UTC and then speed back through, right? So I was there with a group of friends and this is opposite, just before I get to the um, graphic set of uh, traffic lights that you turn to graphic yeah. and then one you turn to 2 Yeah. You see that, that intersection. There's a class of schools there. Sure. We're sitting at the top. There's this gentleman called, young boy, called Ahunu Honga. Anybody remember his name? 
He's the young man who was shot and killed oh, okay. yeah. in okay. that demonstration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Became, you know, Consistently, so, they had referenced yeah. the past for investigations Ahun, and Exactly. That. Ahunu was part of, you know, the neighborhood boys. Oh, okay. And he was on top. I was on top of the, we were all sitting on top of the, of the school um, wall. And so I got down when they got there, right? And tried to follow. But he and others stayed. So in one of those best of, you know, armored vehicles and the guy was they were firing the air, right? One of those three bullets hit Ahunuhonga. And then he fell into the, into the compound. That's how Ahunuhonga died. That's a Kumipeko one. So he became very famous. You know, his name became very famous. Yeah, yeah. So I've seen that. He stopped back, right? Uh -huh. We are having a reloaded on Saturday. I mean, the circumstances are pretty much, pretty much the same. Even even now, it's dire then. I mean, because all this introduction of policies to go for what's going to be, you know. But but for me, really, it comes down to what the people do, right? Because obviously, we've seen that as for the leaders, I mean, you know, they they are not going to do anything. We see, Akufado was was a believer in people power, right? So I expect that he would be receptive to the demands of the people on Saturday. So yeah, I mean, are you going to be there? No. Are you going to be there? Well, I would... Uh, so but you have to go, we have to go and cover. Yes, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, previous videos, um, I will support So I'll be in the studio. Yeah, in the studio. Okay, enjoy the rest of your evening, people.